An app landing page is a standalone web page designed to encourage potential customers to download your app. The app landing page design is normally simple, straightforward, and has all the details of how the app actually works. It also includes a clear call to action to persuade users to click your app's download link, converting visitors into customers. So in today's video, I will show you how to build an app landing page in WordPress step-by-step step with no coding and no design experience needed. Stick around to the end of the video and I will share with you five elements of a successful landing page for an app with examples for each one. Hi, my name is Chris from Seedprod, the number one landing page builder for WordPress. Seedprod has a built-in drag and drop visual editor that allows you to build many different types of landing pages quickly and easily. Please take a moment to subscribe to the channel now to learn more about Seedprod and how we can create amazing landing pages for you. So the first thing we wanna do is head over to your your WordPress dashboard and we want to install the plugin Seedprod. So you can either click the link in the description or head on over to seedprod.com and you're going to want to get the pro license for this. I'm going to be using that version in this video. So go ahead and click the orange button to get Seedprod. And once you've done that and created your account, let's click the login button. On the left hand side, you can enter your email address and password. And after clicking the login button, it'll bring you to the Seedprod account dashboard. And we want to click on the download tab right here and you'll see a big orange button. Let's click this to download the plugin itself. And your license key you'll see on the bottom left corner. You can click the icon here to copy that. And that's all we need for this page so we can close this for now. Let's come over to plugins and then add new. And let's upload a plugin. We can drag and drop this right here. Or you can choose file and select it off of your hard drive. Now let's click install now and we can activate the plugin. Right here we can paste in our license key that we copied earlier and click verify key. You should see a green success message here if everything went fine. We can close this little tab on the bottom if you are using the same browser as I am. And now that Seedprod is installed, you'll see it on the menu on the left hand side here. Just click on pages. It'll bring you to this page and we have different modes and I have video tutorials for these on the channel if you want to check those out. But for this one, we're going to do an app landing page. Let's come down and create a new landing page. And Seedprod is going to ask you to choose a new page template and you can sort these by the filters. So there's coming soon, maintenance mode 404, sales webinar, lead squeeze, thank you and login. So you could pick one of these for your new app landing page, one that makes sense, maybe the color scheme that you like of course you can completely customize this the colors the fonts the images whatever you want so pick one that just gives you a good head start so for this example i'm just going to pick a random you can preview them by hitting the magnifying glass so this one looks pretty good a good little head start it's not a big page let's click the check mark and you can name it whatever you want so i'll just call my app page but you can call it anything that makes sense for you save and start editing the page so this will open up the Seedprod visual editor. And now on the left hand side, you'll see we have blocks we have standard blocks in advance. And these blocks we can just drag onto the page. And now we added a block element to the page. We can delete that. We have little icons above to control the blocks. So we can click here to move it. So I can just drag and move that wherever I want. We have the settings. So this just shows the settings on the left side for this specific block. Those will be different based on what you're clicking on. So this is an image. So this will be applied to image settings here. Those are updated and we have a save block. So if you did something unique to this, you can click save. And if we click here to go back to blocks on the bottom, you'll see save blocks. So you could access that really quickly. That way, if you're using the same custom blocks, you can create one and then reuse it in multiple spots. We can also duplicate. So there I have two. And then the last one is just to delete it. All right, so now that we have our page, we wanna customize this a little bit. We wanna just update it with our content and then we will customize it. So the first thing, I don't want a menu on this. It's just gonna be a single page, but you can have one if you like. So I'm gonna select this section here and we'll just delete that. And now for each blog, you can just start at the top and work your way down and you can just change the text and the elements on the page. So there, just as an example, I named this fitness app. We're gonna change this to something to do with fitness. So I'll just make that a little bit bigger. And then you can come down and change all of the text on the page here. So right here we have a opt-in form. I do like that, but I don't wanna use this here. So I'm gonna duplicate this and we'll save this for the bottom. So I'm gonna move this whole section right down here. So if they make it to the bottom, they can sign up to our email but the idea is to get people to download our app. So we're gonna customize this little section here. I'm gonna delete the opt-in form. We can come to the button block and just drag this over here. So we could change this to download our app. And I'll just update some of the text here as well. 
Great, now we have our button. We can send that to wherever we want to download. Now you don't need this. We could actually add images that link to the Apple and Google Play Store as well. So I'm going to drag over the column and I just want two columns here. And inside here, I'm going to take two images. So one here and one here. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to say, use your own image. And I'm going to upload my own images here. So there we go. I have two buttons here now that I can use the get it on Google Play or download on the App Store. So I'm going to select this one and import that. And then the same thing for the Apple Store. Great, now on the left hand side here, we have all of these settings. Now each button, you would change the link here that would go to the actual app store so that people could click on it to download your specific app. Now I'm not gonna change every little detail here. There's more text, but I'm not gonna write everything out here. I'll just change this bottom one. And then now notice how these two rows are together. Let's click on the settings for the bottom one and click on advanced and spacing. And we can just add a little bit of top margin there. Let's say about 20. Now for these testimonials, we could duplicate this a few times and we could change the image and the quote here and the name. So these could be different people as well. Probably add a little bit of spacing here on each one. So for this example, I'm not going to update this, but I hope you get the point there that you can just change that. All right, so let's customize some of the colors and the actual look of the page. The layout is fine. It's pretty simple, but I, I think you get the idea. Now we have this section up here we can click on and there's a background image. So the food doesn't really make total sense. It's more of a fitness idea than diet. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this and we can use a stock image or upload our own again. So right here, I'm going to actually upload my own image again and then select files and pick the image that I found. So there we go. I'm just going to hit select. So there you go. The photo has uploaded and you can change the background position if you like. So I'm going to change mine to 100% with bottom. And based on your screen size that you'll see more or less of, of that photo itself. If you don't want to use photo, you can use a gradient or solid color background. All right, so we could click on our button and we could change the template of it. So right here we have some pre-made templates. So you can just click on one and that'll automatically update quickly for you. If you come over to the advanced tab, here's a lot of the styles. We could actually just clear this and that uses the default color. Now this default color actually comes from down here. These are your global settings and th these work for your fonts where you can change the header font and body. So if I change this to something random, you'll see that that updates and the same with the body text as well that changes. Now, if you're not quite sure which fonts to use, you can click on the font themes. Seedprod offers a collection of fonts that you can just easily click on and these will update your page instantly. And that goes for colors as well. So you can dial in which colors you want for your headers, text, buttons, links, or background, or you can use a color palette here to change them. So maybe something blue here, and you can see that this updated. Now you can change the background color in here for a solid gradient or a image. Now that's, this is a section that we use the background for this area. The background, this would be for the whole background here. So if I change it to a different color, you can see that that updates here. So maybe we could find a certain type of blue. You can go dark, maybe something like that. You could also do a gradient. So you'd pick a linear or radial and then your first color. So again, we could do a blue and that would go to a specific other color, maybe something a little bit darker. And then we could change the angle on that. You can see that that is changing here on the page. So you could play with these settings to see what works for you. And of course you can add a background image or a video background. On the bottom here, we have the layout navigation. So this is just a text list of all of the elements on the page. So when I hover over, you can see that that selects the, the block or row or section on the right side. We have our revision history as well as our undo and redo. So again, if I delete something here, I could just undo that and it came back right away. We also have sections as well. So if we click here, these are pre-made areas that you can just import into your website. So we have headers, heroes, call to actions, FAQs, features, and footers. So let's say you have an FAQ section or want one, you can just click here and click the import button. And there you go, it added one on the bottom and then you could change the colors here. So the background color, maybe you would change something a little bit darker. And then you could go through and change the text to white or something that you could see. And you would just customize it that way. So that it's just a quick way to add these pre-made sections that you can modify quickly for whatever needs you need for your website. Now we do have our email opt-in. So if we click here, we have different options. You can show the name, but for right now, we're just going to click the email and the text doesn't make much sense on the newsletter, but that's fine. We can change the size and we can align it and we can change the submit button text here. So we could say sign up now or enter email, whatever you want to put. 
we can change the background color. This would override the global settings. So if I change this to blue or green, um, you can see that this is still using the global setting. This is using the local setting on the button. So you could just clear that to use the global again. And then the success action, what message do you want to say after they submit the button? So by default, if they enter their email, this will add their email to the subscriber section in Seedprod. And you can find that in the WordPress admin area. However, you may want to use your favorite email marketing service. So if you click connect up here, you will find a bunch of them here that you may be familiar with. For example, constant contact, you would go to their website, create an account with them and then grab the API key from them. And they have documentation and support to help you find where that is or to set that up. It's usually quite easy and easy to find. So you, then you would come back here and hit connect and then connect new account, paste your API key in here from constant contact. You can give it an optional name and then just hit connect and then you're good to go. And then the last tab here on the, on the top left, we have page settings. So we can change the app name. So I could change this to fitness app because we did change the point of it. You could change the URL of it. And then you can change the page status from draft to publish. I don't personally use this. I use the drop down here to publish. After I've completed everything else, I use this instead. You can show a powered by CPROD link and you can join the affiliate program and get a commission on that if anybody joins through your link. We also have an isolation mode and this is to prevent conflicts with your theme with other plugins or, or the theme that you have installed. So it'll only load the necessary scripts and files for this landing page and it keeps it quicker running. On the left, we have SEO and we recommend that you install all in one SEO and analytics we recommend Monster Insights. You can also paste certain scripts in your header, body, or footer area if you need to do that for some specific reason. As well, you can set up a custom domain. So the URL that we set up here, you can actually link this to a domain name. So you could have mynewdomain.com and it would actually be pulling from this area. So this is a great way you could have many landing pages all under one roof in this WordPress installation and you could have them linking out to all of these other domains. And there is a link here about how to map your custom domain. So if you want to learn more, there's documentations on the seed prod website. And then lastly, down here in the bottom left, we can see the mobile preview. So you click here and you could go through and check how it looks and just make modifications. I would definitely change some of the layout here for the example. I'm just going to leave it how it is for now. So we go ahead and save this and you can preview it. I'm going to go right ahead and publish this and see the live page. So there you go, this is the quick page that I've created. Now I would spend more time on this personally, but you get the idea for what it looks like. We have our download link, we have our app store buttons, we have some information. You would could provide a lot more information on this page. As well, we do have other blocks here, keep in mind. So we have giveaway contests and social sharing and a countdown, maybe it hasn't launched yet. We have menus and star ratings. So of course you could add how many uh, reviews you have on the Google store or the Apple store. And you could just include some statistics here for that if you wanted to do that as well. So you could just save that and then we could preview that change there and you'll see them down here. As a bonus, let's take a moment just to talk about the five elements of a successful app landing page. Number one is a call to action. Your app page exists to encourage users to click your call to action. This should be your click to download button that sends people to your app store of choice. Alternatively, it could be to complete a contact form and get your app directly. Every element on your page should support this primary goal, making your call to action the single most crucial element on the page. It's this that will turn casual visitors into leads and customers. Number two are headlines. The landing page headline is the first thing visitors see. It doesn't have to be particularly witty, but it should clearly explain your app's value and keep people browsing your page. Number three is the body copy. This is just the text on the page. The main copy of your page is where you explain the value and benefits of your app. The copy's length depends on your industry and should provide as much information as will answer the reader's unspoken questions. Ultimately, you want to satisfy why people were interested to learn about your app in the first place. Number four is social proof. Including social proof on your landing page shows users that your app is trustworthy. Many apps show glowing reviews and testimonials from existing customers. They also show any awards or the total number of downloads to showcase the app's popularity. And lastly, number five are engaging visuals. You should also include engaging visuals to make your app landing page stand out. This can be anything from images and graphics to short videos. The goal of visual media isn't to build a beautiful app landing page, it's to enhance the story that your body copy tells. For example, a short video can help explain complicated information in a way that's much more engaging than text.
I hope this video helped you learn how to build an app landing page. While you are working on building and tweaking your app landing page, check out this video I created on how to hide your WordPress website until it's ready. It'll walk you through step-by-step step how to use Seedprod to create fantastic looking maintenance mode pages so you can collect emails, throw giveaway contests, add a countdown timer until your launch, and much more. Thanks for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.